What's happening, family? Dr. Joe here. Hope each of you are well and blessed. Happy Sunday. And I'm so glad you guys have taken the time to join us for another amazing episode of Village Chat. It's amazing how quickly uh, time is going by and time is moving. So we're so happy that you're here. I'm glad that you've taken the time to join us. And what more can I say? I know there are many of you guys who are coming through this process. You're either in the 40-day turnup, you are a part of the Journey 3.0 Plus process, or you may be a family member, a friend, an associate, someone maybe has told you about the process, or maybe you just stumbled across this page. But wherever or wherever you fit in, I'm just glad, and we're glad that you are here. First of all, the 40-day turnup and the Journey 3.0 process is the world's greatest transformational process. It focuses on a holistic transformation of the mind, the body, and the spirit. If a person is changing, you can't just change in one area of existence, you know, physically and or spiritually and or mentally. In order to have total transformation, it has to be holistic, meaning that I have to change fully as a person and I can't just compartmentalize it. I think over the last 10 years, we've done a great job in helping people to kind of tune into that we have helped people to realize that you know a lot of physical issues that they're having weight addictions um, feelings about themselves are basically impacted by mental emotional and spiritual issues so by showing the person and taking them on a process that's holistic is one of the greatest reasons why we've been able to see the amazing results. So that's what we're all about. If you want to follow us, you can do so on Instagram at Journey Life TV, Facebook, Journey Life TV, and right here on YouTube, Journey Life TV. And if you want more information, as well as a free downloadable book, you can check us out at www.journeylife.tv. So Village Chat is an amazing, amazing opportunity because it gives us the opportunity to spotlight actual participants in the process. So these participants can either be in the four day turn up, they can either be in the journey 3.0 process, or they can be leaders. And it gives you guys, the participants and the viewers, a, diff a different type of uh, perspective or vantage point of what this process is. So in the first few weeks, we've had several participants of the four day turn up last week we had a participant of the journey 3.0 and this week we're having an actual leader so i'm excited so i'm glad you're here once again so let's go ahead and jump to our discussion and i want to introduce my very very special guest and my guest today is carmen velez carmen how are you doing today i'm doing good i'm honored to be here with you dr joe in oh, the I'm village so, i'm so glad you're here with me now did i say your last name correctly velez Belez is correct. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Well, you know, you're a leader in, uh, in, in the process and I'm so glad you're here. But before we get into any of that, thank you for being a part. You've been a wonderful leader and your group is just crazy about you. And we hear that all the time, which is awesome. Not only to, to love people, but to be loved is important. So let's start off. We really want to uh, tell the people about you, who you are and where you're from. So tell us about yourself. <laughs> So I um, am originally from um, Palatine, um, have moved to uh, Minnesota for my job opportunity. I'm a registered nurse um, and I work in the travel industry. So basically people come to us um, if they want to travel internationally. And so we vaccinate and give medications and things like that that they need in order for them to be safe while traveling. Um, and so I started here in Palatine in, in Illinois and got a better job opportunity in Minnesota. Um, and that also gives me the opportunity to possibly move to warmer area because I did go from Chicago from cold to colder in Minnesota. But um, it just opens up an opportunity for me to travel into other areas of the United States in the future, um, warmer areas. Wow. So you you are in the health care industry, which is great. I am. You, you are a frontline person, so we salute you. Thank um, you. Uh, people like you, I mean, we wouldn't have a society if it wasn't for people like you. So we want to salute you on your great work. 
How long have you been a nurse? Oh, I've been a nurse for over 20 years, Dr. Joe. Wow. I know you've seen some things, haven't you, Carmen? I've seen a lot. I started in the hospital and moved my way over to um, uh, ob Gyne, And then I've done, um, I've worked in behavioral at, at a school with behavioral children, which was one of the most difficult jobs I had. Um, but it was very rewarding, just mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically draining. Right. Um, and then from there, I moved into the, the travel industry, um, which has been really one of the best jobs I have had. I absolutely love my job. Most of the people that I see are healthy um, mm -hmm. and they want to listen to what I have to say. And most of them are happy, right? Happy to hear what I have to say because of travel. Now, you, br you bring up an interesting statement. You say most of the people that you work with in that part are healthy and they are open to what you have to say. And I know a lot of medical doctors, uh, uh, nurse practitioners, RNs. I'm sure you guys hear a lot of people who just don't want to do what you guys or good guidance from that medical doctor. Do you see that often? And if so, can you give us some examples? Um, I don't see it as often. I, I really don't see it much in our office. The only, as far as medical guidance, um, you have obviously people who are okay with getting vaccinated and then you have people who are not as right. okay with getting vaccinated. And obviously in my position, we encourage um, vaccinations and some vaccinations are actually mandatory. So there's really kind of not a choice if you want to travel to some parts of the country. Um, you do have some choices on some vaccines and, you know, all we do is we do our best to just educate the client to make sure that they understand, um, why these vaccines are, are, um, things that they should do. Um, mm -hmm. but if they don't, that's okay too. I, you know, we have to be, uh, it's actually the, the client's choice, right? Um, you know, in the healthcare industry, you have that right to make a decision based on what you want for yourself. Um, and so for us, it's, you know, we give them the information and then they make that informed decision. They make that decision for themselves. That, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So COVID, I know you've probably seen things that no other eyes or very few eyes have seen uh, as a nurse. How, how, how bad was it, Carmen? You know, we, we've been in it, you know, two and a half years now. How, how, how bad was it from your vantage point? in terms of how it impacted us as a people from what you were able to see? Uh, well, from what I was able to see, because most people come to us healthy, right? Um, we were mainly impacted by travel. So because travel completely stopped, yeah. um, our business really went down. Um, and so we had to pivot. Um, and when I was working in Illinois, we were fortunate enough to have a medical director who was very um, smart business wise. And he pivoted to, um, we were doing temperature checks at essential businesses. So he sent the nurses out to do temperature checks. Um, and we would do mostly like warehouse places like that. Uh, then we, uh, after doing that for a while, so what we would do is we would check for symptoms as they were coming into work, check their temperatures and then send them home, obviously if they had any symptoms and then follow up with them afterwards. And then from there, we pivoted to doing testing. And most of the testing that we did were, were at schools, a lot of the testing. So we got into the school system. We did a lot of testing on the te mostly the teachers mm. um, and staff. And then after that, we pivoted to actually actual vaccination. So then we started vaccinating and going into the schools and vaccinating and partnering with um, the community and and different companies to uh, help vaccinate. And then obviously they were coming into the office to be vaccinated as well. Got it. Well, b being a nurse, like what are, what are some of the biggest challenges and what are some of the biggest rewards of being, of be doing what you do? Um, some of the biggest challenges. So trying to get to people to understand, um, why we do what we do, why we tell you some things are um, things that you should do for yourself, you know, as as a, you know, just trying to advocate for the patient. Um, that That is one of the most challenging things is, you know, trying to explain to the patient, like, 
um, say a vaccine or say a medication, why you would need it. And then people are still, you know, kind of wanting to do their own thing. That's kind of, that's one of the challenges, but we, we can get past that, obviously. Um, rewarding as far as what I'm doing now is I get to see where people are going. Um, I get to see, uh, you know, most of the people that are, that are coming to us are very healthy, uh, and they're excited. And so I, I love the excitement that I get from the patients as they come into the office to tell us where they're going, where they're traveling to, um, you know, their journey uh, actually for travel. So, um, you know, outside of that, when I worked in the hospital, uh, it was just seeing the patient obviously get better. Um, yeah. I worked on the orthopedic unit and we were a trauma one center. So we would see a lot of patients that will come in accident, major accidents, things like that. And so um, seeing them get better was very rewarding. Um, I don't know that I could work on units like oncology and things like that. That's you know, I, I don't, it takes a special person to do certain things, right? So it takes a special nurse to do that kind of job or to do ICU nursing or ER nursing. They're, they're very frontline. Right. Um, right. And so it takes, it, you have to kind of find your niche mm -hmm. and then work it that way. Just, just like any other calling. Exactly. That, that's awesome. Well, kudos to you for what you do. Uh, that's, that's great. It's so needed. Let's talk about, um, I remember when you started. I remember I remember your whole trajectory when you were a participant leader and to see you is, has just been great. Talk to us about what brought you to the four day turn of like, how did you find out about it? Um, what led you to it? So actually, I'm a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. So shout out to all my sorors out there. Um, actually, uh, our Theta Epsilon chapters, uh, I came from Bradley University and we're very, very, a very, very tight chapter. And so some of the sorors actually, a, a bunch of them did. I, I don't know if it was the Transformers. It was one of those groups. Um, and a lot of them were losing a lot of weight. And they decided to host a Zoom meeting at the end of their process. Um, and a lot of us who were maybe interested in some weight loss or, you know, we got on there just to see, you know, what, what is it that, that they did? And so they talked about you, about the process a little bit, and um, that you were having a... Um, registration coming up soon and so um, we also have a group me that we are all a part of so um and i know when you have your registrations usually you have like at this time everybody can sign up and i'm telling you they had a countdown like you guys got to get in there because if you don't get in there you might not be able to make it in and so it was like oh my gosh like this is serious <laughs> so um after all of that after that happened then um I think it was last year in about March or uh, yeah, I think March. Um, my birthday is in May. So I was like, I want to lose at least 10 pounds. That's that, that's my goal. I, I, I've been trying. I've actually done uh, I done vegan for one month um, and lost 10 pounds, but gained it all back because there's I don't, I'm a meat eater. So that's just not going to work for me. Right. So um, I talked to Angie Bingham, Angela Bingham, who's a super leader. Shout out to Angie Bingham. Shout out to Angie. Um, she uh, she's one of my sorors, and um, she was like, "I think I think this would be a good thing for you. Just try it out and see." And so I said, "Okay, let me try. Let's see, you know, how this process works." And uh, so I signed up. She really didn't tell me much else, right? Because everything is a secret. We can't <laughs> really say <laughs> what exactly it is, but. Um, Signed up for it, did the man, uh, modules, and then realized, like, I didn't get a confirmation. Um, so something happened. I don't know what happened. So I was, like, blowing her phone up, and she was like, oh, my gosh, can you just calm down? <laughs> just calm down. It'll be fine. I'm like, nope, nope. I'm going to go back and redo the modules because I should have gotten a confirmation. So thank God I went back and redid the modules because then I got the confirmation. So there must have been some glitch. So got in um, and then started uh, started the process, I believe it was last year in June when, when we started with the risers, I believe, um, is when we started. Yeah. And so I, um, got in, um, we started with our group. We actually lost our leader and then we ended up with Clarence Wells. Shout out to Clarence Wells. Um, he was our leader for the risers. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. so got through that. I thought I was only going to lose 10 pounds, Dr. Joe. I ended up losing 20 pounds. I couldn't wow. believe it. 
Wow. I didn't even know I had 20 pounds to lose. Um, <laughs> I did. And I was like, whoa, it must have been somewhere because it came up. <laughs> you know how you say um, your body's going to lose what it needs to lose, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, and it needed to lose 20 pounds. Um, and so I've been pretty much maintaining since and then moved on to the journey. Uh, shout out to Lonita C. She was my um, my leader at that time. Um, and moved on to the journey and, um, just really, I was already in my BMI. So I had to kind of maintain and I'm like, well, okay. don't I have a range that I can maintain? And she was like, you can't gain any weight. Right. That was basically the rule you can't. And I'm like, well, but the range is from here to here. <laughs> I'm like, so I think I could gain maybe one or two and then come back down and, you know, but, um, obviously that's not, you don't really gain. I'm, if people are gaining weight through this process, they're doing something wrong. Right. You know? So I, I pretty much was able to actually maintain. I actually lost about two pounds um, during the journey. And then after that, um, became a leader for MetaMe. Wow. That, that is, you said a lot. Let's go back to 40 day turn up because as you know, Carmen, a lot of people are watching this and they're actually going through it. When you were coming through the process, what was the biggest obstacle you had to overcome? Like for, if for everyone is different. Mm -hmm. If you had to say, what was that for you and what did you do to overcome that? My biggest obstacle was, um, I would have to say, meal prepping. Mm. Actually having to go to the store, getting all my items for the entire week mm -hmm. and getting all my meals together for the week because of work. You have to, like this process, if you do not meal prep, it's not going to work. You have to have to meal prep. Otherwise, you're just grabbing whatever and you're trying to, you know, do what you taught us off yeah. off jump. And you can't really do that um, if you don't meal prep. So um, and also trying to get as much vegetables in because I'm, I'm not really a big I wasn't a big vegetable eater. Like right. I barely ate vegetables. Now I eat vegetables every day, even if I don't like them because I know they're good for me. Right. 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 That makes total sense. So. Um, you know, you bring up a, a big one. Meal prep just takes a lot of the guessing out. It takes a lot of the me mess ups because when people don't meal prep, you put yourself in a position to where you're making spur of the moment. Oh, let me get this. Oh, I couldn't weigh this. Oh, uh, I shouldn't eat this, but I do. So to your point, I mean, that's great. You know, meal prep is is definitely so, so very important. Let's go to so you come out of the four day turn up, you're in the journey. What was the difference from your experience during the journey and the four day turn up? Wow, the journey is just totally different. I mean, the food is the same, but it's it's mainly getting to know yourself, really like working through some things. Um, and there were some things that I had to work through. Um, mm -hmm. And so that was just you know writing things down and the assignments and things like that it was just more of a spiritual thing a spiritual connection um you know there some of those assignments were they were yeah. tough yeah. they were tough you yeah. know you really have to dig deep you we i had to dig deep inside of me you know to fight to figure out what is it that was going to make me a better person you right. know not only um not only physically, but mentally, emotionally, and spiritually as well. And I think the journey did that for me. Wow, that's that's awesome. You four day turn up journey, and now you are a second time leader. Yep. Now, I want to ask you a unique question. So, every process is different. Four day turn up is different. Journey is different. Your first round as a leader. How was it different for you in the capacity of a leader than being a participant? Now I had to really monitor everybody else. So instead of just monitoring myself and what I'm eating and minding my own business and doing my own thing and going about my daily, you know, life. Now I have 13 or 14 women that um, I'm in charge of, you know, and um I am so passionate about fitness. I'm passionate about health. I'm passionate about food, all of that. Like just, um, I love to see participants getting results. Yeah. And so, you know, that, that was something that was, um, 
different for me, you know, just having to really um, look at everybody's meals and making sure that everybody's doing what they're doing. And then if they don't have results, well, why didn't, why didn't you have results? Let's talk about it. And um, I'm, I'm a very focused person, individually focused on everybody. I know everybody in my group. I knew everybody in my last group. Shout out to Destin Diamonds, um, met a me. Uh, and now I'm leading another group of 13. Um, shout out to Flash. Got to shout him out, Dr. Joe. Shout him out. Shout him out, Carmen. <laughs> shout out to Flash. Um, they're doing a great job. Um, obviously, we have obstacles that we're going through and um, life happens. You know, things happen. People pass away. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, people get sick, things mm -hmm. like that. And I, the, you know, keeping them motivated, yes. that, that's, that's our job. Wow. That, well, you should be commended because being a leader is a, is a huge undertaking, but it's very, very rewarding. So in your group now, Team Flash, you got 13 ladies, right? Mm -hmm. Right. How does it feel to you for you to look at these ladies, see their changes, see their transformation, see their victories and know you are a part of that? How does that make you? It has to make you feel great. Yeah, it's a really, really good feeling, Dr. Joe. Like um, last week, one of my participants called me when they left the doctor's office and she was so happy. The first person she called was, I don't know, maybe she called her family, but I know I was one of the first people she called and she was like, I had to call you. I couldn't text you all this information. She was like, I went to the doctor and she, first of all, she's a smoker mm -hmm. and she was on three blood pressure medications. So obviously now she's since the process, she has not smoked. And awesome. yeah, so I'm so proud of her. Um, cool. And um, she said, my doctor said I was on three medications. I didn't know I was on three because, you know, sometimes they have combo drugs and things like that, that they, right. they're not there or they not might not think a water pill is a, helps with the blood pressure type thing. And the doctor said, I'm taking you off of these two. So she actually went to the emergency room or the urgent care because she felt dizzy at work. Mm -hmm. And her blood pressure, one one blood pressure she turned in was like 90 over 70. And sometimes I have to rem remind myself, like, was this person on blood pressure medication? Because if I see that, then I say, hey, are you on blood pressure meds? You might want to talk to your doctor about that because that's right. pretty low blood pressure. And so um, so she felt dizzy one day and um, went to the urgent care and they obviously told her to follow up. And so the doctor was like, oh, yeah, we're taking you off these two, but we're just going to keep you on this one medication just in, you know, just because I don't want to cheat. The doctor was just worried about taking fully off of her medication. Right. And so I said, that's great, but you're probably going to come off that one, too. Mm -hmm. So I said, just keep monitoring your blood pressure. I'm so proud of you. I mean, she was so happy. And so then I had her give the testimony at our meeting. And, um, cool. you know, she's she's just I, and, I, and that's what makes me feel so good is all these people coming off these medications. I had a diabetic in my last group and she was on three diabetic medications and got down to one. And I think maybe she's uh, I actually featured her on one in one of my meetings. And um, I think she said she was she's off of all of them now. That is uh, awesome. Yeah. So Salute that your participant who took and took her life back. That's just great. I mean, it's so. It's such a great positive environment when you're around people who are happy about themselves and mm. it just lets you know like you know you, you kind of see like the world differently because most people aren't happy i hate to say it mm -hmm. and when you get in this group and you see people who are uh getting off of blood pressure medication reversing diabetes losing weight feeling better about themselves excited positive i mean it's just it's 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 very infectious you know, and, and it's just a blessing to be a part of it. And, you know, you are one of the individuals that that make it. So so here we are. You're, you're a leader. You're, we're at the believe it or not, Carmen. Can you believe we're halfway through? Can you believe that? I can't believe it. I was telling them we're halfway. So you better be halfway towards your goal. Halfway. Foot on the gas. Now, on the gas. so we got three more weeks in this process. We know it continues, but like, what would you like to see for the ladies in your group and for the other participants in this process who are at that midpoint? It's time right now. Um, we've already, we're three weeks in. There is no reason why our meals shouldn't be looking the way they should be looking. Um, you've taught us everything that we need to know about how to combine our meals and um, 
you know, right now we're trying to make some adjustments. Um, you know, things, like I said, things happen and sometimes people gain. It's not supposed to happen, but we know that there's something that you did wrong. So let's figure it out. So right now we're at the figuring out point. Like, so what is it? I, and, and a lot of the girls and my ladies in my group um, have issues with the, uh, a lot of fruit. There's a lot of fruit that is yeah. uh, on their meals. And um, and so we have to make that adjustment, uh, you know, and calorie wise, where are we at? So at this point right now, we're actually making those uh, food adjustments because most of them, all of them know how to put a meal together. It's just you have to work with um, with your what the way your body works. Right, Dr. Joe. So like right. um, that one. Right. That one, um, you did a master class on um, sensitivities and what if you're carb sensitive. And right. I'm, I'm hoping that you'll do that again so they can understand that um, what when you should be eating fruits maybe earlier in the day versus later in the day. So that's what we're doing right now. We're making those adjustments. Um, one of my goals, Dr. Joe, was for you to call out our name, to call out one of my participants' names. And this past week, I got Alicia Jones had the most pounds lost and I was so excited about that. So um our next shout group, out Alicia Jones. Shout out to Ida Alicia wow. Jones. Um Salute. That's yeah, great. So so proud of her. She's she's taking her life back as well. And um and so our next goal, Dr. Joe, is as a team. We want to be up there as a team. So I don't know that we're gonna make it this week, but we're gonna push for okay. that before the process is over. Nothing beats a failure but a try. That's, That's right. That that is just awesome. So, la last question that I want to ask you: um, You've gone through this before, in terms of you were a leader in Metami, and you got whoever ladies that finished to the finish line for graduation. I'm certain that that was like a, a great emotional celebration. Mm -hmm. Tell, just give people an inkling of what graduation is like you know when you finish the finish line maybe not only as a participant but as a leader graduation is what we strive for right so the minimum is 10 pounds dr joe and i tell people you can lose more than 10 because i right. thought I, I didn't even know i had more than 10 pounds to lose right. so i'm looking at everybody like shoot for the stars yeah. um shoot for it graduation is one of the best feelings you just took your life back once you get to that that point ain't yeah. no turning back dr joe that's true. that's true um get through it but that's not the end you right. have to continue reach your goal uh that's one of the most important things is don't take this process for granted yeah. um the things that you are teaching us are valuable valuable information and and it's free Right. Like who can be free, right, Dr. Joe? Yeah. You could be charging a ton of money. You could be it's charging wrong with me. Who knows? <laughs> you literally could be charging. I mean, some of the girls in my group have done programs. I'm not gonna say the program, the the they call it a program, right? We don't call it a program, but they call it a program because it begins and it ends. Right. And obviously, some of them have already gained all their weight back after paying thousands, yeah, hundreds, yeah. thousands, yeah. and and this is free, and so um you know just graduation is one of the best feelings but the, the the most important thing is what you do after now let's talk about that i i, I said that was the last one but i want to ask you one more when people finish the process what has been a key for you to maintain the lifestyle if you had to say for myself or for for yourself like, for what, what did you do yeah what did you do to where, like, when you got to the end of the four-day turn-up, you 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 stuck with the teachings and what you learned and what with your new lifestyle? So honestly, Dr. Joe, I didn't change any. I continued to do every single thing, and I still continue till today to do everything that you have taught me to do, um, including our fasting. That is so important, yeah. so important. And I continue to fast every Monday. Um, I prep my meals 80, 80, 20, right. um, you know, and you, you, you will teach at the end how to bring in a cheat meal, that kind of right. thing. Once you've reached your goals and I have reached my goal, it's always more you can do though, even though you've right. reached your goals, right? Like Dr. Joe, how you go back and you do a cut. That's what I yeah. do. Yeah. Um, yeah. and so, um, you know, I learned how to incorporate what you taught us as far as like a cheat meal. Um, you have to be very, very careful with that because I promise you, 
it comes on quick. Yeah, playing with fire. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to be very, very careful on what you know where you do your cheat meal, one meal, not more than one, you know that kind of thing. So, um, you know, so that that is, and I and I'm continuing. And the the, the really good thing is people's people are watching you. And so they see you and they're like, what are you doing? You seem so happy, you, you know, and so you're the example. So there are, I'm sure, people that have family members that need this. Mm -hmm. And so you, you have to continue to set that example even after the process, because um, if you end the process and then you gain all your weight back, then what was the point? What have you done? Exactly. What have you done? Right. Those two detox days ain't no joke. No joke. No sure. joke. So you right. got through all of that and everything that you did and then you gave it all back. Don't do it. So just stick with it. Continue. And even when you reach your goals, you this is a way of life. It is. Yes. It's a way of life. Well, that is excellent. I mean, you, you have been just a joy to interview. Thank you for being our guest. You are an amazing, amazing person and you're even more amazing coach. Those ladies are blessed to have you as their leader. So I want to salute to Team Flash and all the rest of you. So Carmen Velez, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Joe, can I shout out, make a few more yeah. shouts out? Okay, I have to shout out my servant leaders, Amelia Cole, uh, my super leader. I told her I would shout her out. Shout uh, out, she, Amelia. She's Memphis, amazing. She Memphis Amelia. Memphis Amelia. And let me <laughs> tell you, she constantly challenges me on this Apple Watch, Dr. Joe. I cannot keep up with her. <laughs> she's awesome. I can't. She maxes out points every day. I'm like, OK, I'm out of town. I don't know how I'm going to do this. So she's amazing. Shout out to my sister, Nancy Morales. She she came in through Meta Me. She lost 15 pounds. And shout out to my cousin, Carnesha Lofton, yeah. who lost over. Yep. She lost over 60 pounds. And one more shout out. My daughter, she is my technical person. She does all my videos. I, I, I don't I don't know how to do any of that stuff. So um, shout out to Jasmine. Um, she shout out to videos. Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. is awesome well shout out to all you amazing ladies and shout out to you carmen thank You've you been great thank you for being my guest and um because of people like you is what makes this such a special place so thank you for being on with us at village chat and we are blessed to get to know you ladies and gentlemen carmen velez <laughs> thank you thank you carmen you be blessed you too. Thanks. Bye-bye, Dr. Joe. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Carmen Velez, ladies and gentlemen, what a great interview. Shout out to her. Salute to all of you ladies of Team Flash, as well as all the rest of you. What a great, 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 great interview, Carmen Velez. What I want to do at this time most times we have our Monday morning, as you guys know, results. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide your results right now. I'm going to provide those results now because in the morning, instead of waiting later on in the day, my, my morning's a bit different. I figured that we would just combine it today to give you this week's achievements so we can continue to press forward. I want to give a big shout out to my amazing team, Steph, Lisa, Didi, Lynette, Fred, my amazing ambassadors, super leaders, to all of my leaders in the Journey 3.0 process and the 4D turn up. And thanks to Lisa for getting these statistics to me. So we're going to go ahead and do that on tonight. The four-day turn up, 2022 session two, week three results. We have currently still enrolled in the process 1,779 participants who've lost a total of 20,876 pounds, 20,876 pounds. That is absolutely incredible. Wow. The average weight loss per person in three weeks is 
11.73 pounds. You are ounces behind your predecessors at 11.85. You are an ounce point two away, neck and neck with the best performing class ever. You're closing the gap each and every week. Our biggest loser is Carolyn Coleman Perry, leader Laquita Butler. Carolyn has lost 31 pounds in three weeks. She's lost 17% of her body weight. Salute, Carolyn. Most pounds lost. Brian Christopher Banks, leader Brian Cody. Christopher has lost 40 pounds in three weeks. Salute Christopher Banks. Salute leader Brian Cody. Countries that represent this process, Afghanistan, Bahamas, Canada, Grenada, Jamaica, Nigeria, the United Kingdom, and the United States. 40 people dropped this week or were removed. That's 15% of the total population, so 85% are still in the race. 94% meeting attendance rate. The best performing team, number one, leader Bridget Faison. Team, choose to lose. Salute, Bridget. 7.53%. Number two, leader Marcus Dawkins. Team, master shredders at 7.29%. Salute, Master Shredders. Three, Leader Jerome Duncan. Team Mission Slim Possible at 7.23%. Salute to the best performing teams. That is just fantabulous. 1,146 people are in the 10 pound plus club. 91 of you have lost 20 plus pounds. Six have lost 30 plus pounds. One has lost 40 plus pounds. Average weight loss by gender for women is 11.4 pounds, 16.2 pounds for the men. Best performing age group for the third consecutive week, my 18 to 19 year olds at 6.04%. Salute to my young people. Love you. Best performing states, Idaho at 8.47%. West Virginia, number two, at 7.28%. And Iowa at 7.05%. Salute. My vegans, male and females, are doing wonderful. My female vegans have lost, on average, 11.2 pounds which is just under the average. And my male vegans have lost 19.2 pounds per average, which is three pounds above the average for everyone else. So it's great to have a process where people who are meat eaters and non-meat eaters are able to coexist and still get great results. Most nutritional profiles encourage you to be one or the other. But here in the 40-day turnup and the Journey 3.0, both entities are getting great results. That is awesome. Salute to you guys. I have nothing but kudos for you all. You guys are right where you need to be. You're performing well. But like we always say, gang, let's keep our foot on the gas. That's very, very important that we keep our foot on the gas. All right. Let's journey over to our journey 3.0. Week three, we got 521 participants, 3,087 pounds lost. Average loss per participant, 5.9 pounds. You close the gap once again. The previous group at this point was at 6.5 pounds. Our biggest loser, Brenda Trotter. Leader, Tanya Smith. Brenda has lost 17.4 pounds, 13% of her body weight in three weeks. Salute, Brenda. 
Most pounds lost, Jacob Mobley. Leader, Percy Keys. He's lost 26 pounds. Salute, Jacob. Countries that represent this process, Canada, the United States, the United Kingdom, Trinidad and Tobago. We only lost seven people this week. Meeting attendance of 95%. Assignment completion of 100%. We have 80% of people who are still in the race. Congratulations. Best performing teams. Number one, Team Beauties Building Bonds. Leader, Shan Ellis Robinson. Team Journey Jewels. Leader, Ethel Enogene. Team three. Team Misfit, leader, Marnice Smith-Harvey. Congratulations, gang. Listen to these numbers. 462 of our participants in the journey have lost 20 pounds or more. 256 people have lost 30 pounds or more. 104 people have lost 40 pounds or more. 43 people have lost 50 pounds or more. 14 people have lost 60 pounds or more. Six people have lost 90, 70 to 99 pounds. And we have one person who is in the 100-pound club. That is amazing. Jacob Mobley is officially in the 100-pound club. He shared 102.6 pounds congratulations ladies and gentlemen that is just awesome congratulations jacoby what a great life changing manifestation average weight loss by gender my females are down 5.8 pounds the men are down 7.4 pounds best performing age group my 60 to 69 year olds we got a hundred people that's amazing. Best performing states, Arkansas, number one, New Jersey, number two, and Maine at number three. Gang, listen, we're at the halfway point. You're at the halfway point, and I have nothing but kudos to give to you. Overall, I like what I see. Overall, I like the numbers that I see in the 40-day turnup and in the Journey 3.0 Plus process. But I always want to see better. I want to see your best. So here we are at the halfway point. Let's keep our foot on the gas. Let's keep pressing forward. Let's keep headed in the direction that we need to be in so we can rob the bank. So once again, I want to thank you all for being here with us on tonight. Salute to my guest, Carmen Velez, and shout out to each of you on the amazing accomplishments. We got our water fast week four, which is coming up this week, week five and week six. You heard what Carmen said, how much of an integral part of fast day is for her to this day. You need to get yours now. You're ready for it. Let's prepare ourselves and be certain to win before we even show up. Until next time, you be well, you be blessed. Love each of you, and I'll see you very, very soon.